united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning to everybody. We welcome you to the show, United with Christ. I'm your host for today, Pastor Susano Creo Jr. I'm the senior pastor of El Paso First Assembly. It's such a great honor and a privilege to be here on this very warm uh, Thursday morning, and we welcome everybody watching. This is the day the Lord has made. You have a choice. I will rejoice, and I'm going to be glad in it. And so rejoice this morning. You're breathing. If you're able to watch this, if you're streaming, you're watching this live, thank the Lord, despite where you find yourself, that you are breathing and alive. And so we welcome you to the show. We're going to start with some prayer this morning and, uh, and ask God just to be with us. Father, I thank you for every viewer, every person that's watching today, every person that you've brought, God, with a purpose and a plan. Lord, I don't believe whether somebody's watching this live, watching this rebroadcast, Lord, I just do not believe that you're God of coincidence, you're God of correct destiny, you're God of precision, you're God of perfect timing. So if somebody's watching this today, Lord, we believe that they have, that you have allowed them to watch this for a purpose and a reason. So I just pray, God, that you would remove me and that your spirit would flow through to me, through me to all the viewers, everybody listening that your word, God, will be life-changing for them. In Jesus' name, amen. And so we welcome you guys this morning. Our prayer lines are open. We have people that are there ready to serve you. The Bible says when two or three come in agreement and ask anything that, that is pleasing to the, the Father, the will of the Father, he'll do it. And so there's power in prayer. There's power in unity. So call our prayer line, 915-532-8518. We have some people that are there ready to pray with you um, during any time of this uh, broadcast. If you feel um, the need just for prayer or the Holy Spirit's moving in your heart and you want to just come in agreement or there's a burden on your heart right now, please call our prayer line. They're open right now, ready to receive your call. So we're going to open up with some scripture this morning and I'm going to read Luke chapter 6 verse 45 and it reads this way, a good man, all right, out of the good treasure of his heart will bring forth good fruit. And an evil man out of evil things in his heart is going to bring forth evil. For out of the abundance, the overflow, okay, the abundance of the heart, it's going to flow to your mouth and you're going to speak it, all right? And then we're going to read Proverbs 4.23. I'm going to lay 4.23, the, ground, uh, the foundation for this uh, message today. Keep your heart, it says in Proverbs, with all diligence, for out of it uh, spring forth the issues of life. And so we got to, it's a heart issue. We got to watch everything that is in our heart. Um, I say that because today, you know, I want to just kind of talk to you about temperature. You know, outside right now, um, we're scheduled to have a hot day today, about 102, 103. Tomorrow is projected to be 104, 105. It's going to be hot. And, and the way that we determine and the way that we can see how hot it's going to be is a thing called a thermometer a thermometer, all right? And so a thermometer, what a thermometer does, what does it do? It's going to measure and it's going to tell you the precise temperature that it is outside. A thermometer is used and wherever you place the thermometer, the thermometer can be inside a refrigerator, inside a freezer, the thermometer can be outside, the thermometer can be anywhere uh, when you push it inside that meat. Uh, the outside of the meat may be hot, but you put that thermometer on the inside of that meat, and that meat's going to give you, that thermometer is going to give you an exact temperature of what's on the inside. I want you to say on the inside, on the inside. What's on the inside is what I want to talk to you today. The Bible says, hey, be careful, guard your heart, because out of it come the issues of life, um, the, you know, and out of the abundance of what's in your heart, you're going to speak. And I, I want to talk to you today because I know that our audience out there is a lot of people that are believers. Maybe you're not a believer, but the majority of the audience on, on, on Christian television are people that want to have good programming and want to hear the, the gospel and want to hear good things, right? So they're putting good things in there. But I want to tell you about some things because sometimes we in ourselves uh, can become a thermometer. And, and what I mean by that in life is everything around us affects us. That's what happens to a thermometer. If, you, if it's outside and it's very hot, that thermometer is going to go up. 
But if that same thermometer is on the outside and, and the temperature is dropping, it's going to give that indication. Okay, in our lives, we have that ability, okay, to be that thermometer about what's going on, our circumstances, our surroundings, things will change. I want to read you some scriptures in uh, Exodus because the people um, that God was getting ready to deliver have had a way of being a thermometer. There's, there's a problem with being a thermometer. Let me, let me just read Exodus 12. It says that during the night, Pharaoh was calling Moses and he told them, get your people, go. He said, leave now. He says, as you have uh, asked me, go worship the Lord your God. He says, and, and take everybody and, and you're free to go. And so these people, the, the Israelites, had been praying not for one year, not for five years, not even for 100 years, had been praying for 400 years of del for deliverance. There were generations that died in Egypt that never got to exit out. And that's why it's called the Great Exodus, the exodus out of the land of Egypt. And God answers prayer. Our prayer lines open, God answers prayer. And so the same God that answered their prayer spoke to Pharaoh and he said, hey, let my people go. Bless me on the way out. So these people in their heart should be really rejoicing, thankful, okay, that God has answered a 400-year prayer request. I don't know about you, but when I pray and it's been, Lord, I've been praying for two years. I've been praying for months, Lord. You know, it's, it's, it's difficult. But I don't know about praying for 400 years and, and later on generations see the, saw the answer to this prayer. And now Pharaoh's letting the people go. And as the people are going, the Bible says in Exodus that Pharaoh started to think and said, what do we just do? He told all his officials, what do we just do? We let all these people go. There are a lot of people who's going to do their work. And Pharaoh changed his mind and he set out after these people. So I, these people are on the Exodus. They're on the way out. And Pharaoh changed his mind, and they're coming af after them. So in Exodus chapter 14, verse 10, it says, As Pharaoh approached, because now he's coming after them, the Israelites looked up, and they saw the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified, and, and they cried out to the Lord. And then they told Moses, Was it because there was not enough graves in all of Egypt that you brought us out here to the desert to die? What have you done to us, bringing us out here in Egypt. Didn't we tell you in Egypt that to leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die out here in the desert. That's amazing to me. And, and it's very easy. I've been around Christian people all my life. Um, I've been a pastor for many years, and I've seen the trends of people. I've seen the people that are worshiping God and giving him praise when he does something in their life. And I've seen the same people that as soon as one little thing goes wrong, turn their back and question God and start to be like, God, why did you do that? I don't understand. And in a, in a way, just like the Israelites did. Now, it's, it's, it's common. And, and that's why I want to talk about it. It's common because there's a lot of Christians that worship and understand like, you know what, God, it's good. And it's easy to worship when it's good. It's easy to worship when there's no sickness. It's easy to worship when the bills are paid. It's easy to worship when everything is going good. But right here, before this, and if you read your word, and I know a lot of you know your word, but before this scenario, God had set 10 plagues. So the Israelites had seen the hand of God. They had seen miracles. They had seen signs and wonders never seen before ever. And they saw these things. So they should have known God is getting ready to deliver us. God is with us. And as they see this, they're, now they're turning and crying out to God and saying, God, did you were there not enough graves out in Egypt that you brought us out here to die? Pharaoh's after us. Now, the same God that sent those 10 plagues that was the key to deliverance for them is the same God that's with them on the way out. And I want to tell you that God is with you in every season of your life. God is with you in the good and the bad. The word of the Lord declares, I will, even though your mother and father will leave you, I will never forsake you. That's God's word, not man's word, God's word. And so these people are freaking out and, and they're saying, you know what? Did you bring us out here to die? What were these people? They're temperature people. They're, th they're thermometer people. In other words, the temperature changes, so they change. Because when it was good, they're worshiping God on the way out. Thank God he's good. His deliverance, his mercy is good. And they're walking out laughing and praising. And then all of a sudden, here comes Pharaoh. And then 
it changes. Just like the temperature, the thermometer changes. There were thermometer people, it changed. God, what are you doing? God, why is this happening? God, I thought you, you know, we're going to bring deliverance. We got to be careful when that happens because we see these people continually do that. So what happens? You know the story. God opens up the Red Sea, another miracle, a supernatural miracle. I don't think, I think so many times we read God's word and we don't understand how dynamic that was. A supernatural uh, situation here. God splits the Red Sea. The people walk on dry land, get to the other side. Pharaoh continues all his army and God closes the Red Sea and they're gone forever. The people are shouting, they're dancing. They're just so happy about it. So you would think from that experience, from the 10 plagues, from the deliverance, from Pharaoh coming, the Red Sea, you would figure that the people would learn, hey, God is with us. The God is, is, is delivering us. God doesn't bring us out to drop us. God doesn't bring us out to leave us stranded. God doesn't deliver us from one place to drop us at another. That's not the God I serve. That's not the God that you serve. The God that maybe you don't understand or maybe you don't comprehend, even though you may say, Pastor, I don't understand this because I'm going through cancer. I don't understand. But God is with you. And you got to understand in every season, you cannot learn to be a thermometer. Hey, when it's good, I'm just going to be a worshiper and I'm going to talk good things of God. And he's a deliverer and he's a healer. Even though you may have cancer, even though you may have diabetes, even though you may have a situation in your life, something going on in your body, God is still a healer. God is still a deliverer. God is still faithful to his word. And so I'm here to tell you that you've got to understand this and not be a thermometer because the temperature changes, you change. And these people were like that. After they did that, they worshiped, life went on. And then in, in Exodus chapter 16, the Israelites were saying, you know what? We're hungry. We're tired of this manna. If you read the Bible, manna was a supernatural food substance source coming down from heaven. And these people started to complain. God gives them quail. And then they keep complaining. Hey, that's too much quail. We don't want this no more. And it continues on and on. These were thermometer people. And so we got we to gotta be able to, to make a difference and not be like a thermometer. I'm going to talk a little bit more about it, but we're going to take uh, time for a music video, music break. I think you're going to be blessed with this video. I loved it because God's getting ready to give you a breakthrough in Jesus' name. I know you enjoyed that video. It's so, so awesome. We've been talking about temperature. We've been talking about thermometer. I've been talking about the people of Israelite, the Israelites who came out of Egypt. And during every situation, they were thermometer people. And, and the reason why I say that, because during every circumstance, their surroundings affected them within. I read the opening scripture, guard your heart, because out of it are the issues of life. And, and it talked about out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So these people... The Israelites, God was delivering supernaturally, doing miracles like never before, signs and wonders that one can only fathom. They sound like fairy tales when you read that in God's word because it's like opening the Red Sea. Wow. The plagues. Wow. Manna falling from heaven. Still, they complained. And then as they're journeying and on, they continue on their journey, they wanted water. And it was bitter and all these kinds of things. And God turned the water sweet so they could drink it. Then God poured water from a rock. I mean, supernatural things like unheard of. Yet the people praised God when things were good. And when things got bad, they complained. God does not like people like that. And, and I'm careful with that statement because you may say, well, God likes everybody. Well, God loves everybody, but he didn't like their attitude of the heart. He didn't like what was inside of them. He didn't like what their thermometer was reading. He didn't like thermometer people. Why? Because there came to a point where God said, these people are stiff necked. In other words, they only see it one way. These people cannot turn and see the goodness of God. They're just stiff in, in the way they perceive and see things. And he said, these people won't enter the promised land. I'm here to tell you, it's very important because there's a lot of Christians that I see that I minister to. A lot of people that we counsel, a lot of people that we see in churches that don't go to the next promise, that don't go to the next level, that go, don't go to the next phase that God has planned for them. He made the promised land for his people. Why didn't they go in? Because they were thermometer people. It affected them. They, good when it's good, bad when it's bad, they complain. And God says they're stiff necked. They're not going to enter into this land. Everybody's going to die out here. They, not until the next generation, because there had to be a dying out process because of the way these people were. Now, you may be like that. I've known a lot of people like that. I'm, I'm careful to guard my heart that I don't fall that way. 
And when things are good and just worship the Lord, when I'm good, worship the Lord when things are good. But when they're bad, kind of complain, kind of be, Lord, I don't understand. Murmur, don't go to church. There's a lot of people that church is packed when things are good. And then when things, uh, things are, are get really bad, they'll go, they'll, they'll try to run and go to church or, you know, and, and, and just like that stiff neck, I'm just going to go to God for when I need things. But when things are good, you won't see me. That, that's thermometer people, people that just go when things, you know, their circumstances change. And I'm here to tell you that that displeases the Lord. So this generation dies, that generation died out, out there. You may say, well, what do you want me to be? You need to be a thermostat, not a thermometer, thermostat. Let me tell you why, because if you have a thermometer and it's outside, it's always going to give you the indication of the surroundings. That's a thermometer. But a thermostat does the same. It gives you an indication of the surroundings. It tells you what the temperature is, but it could change. A thermostat can change the temperature. It could change the circumstance. It could change. And I want to tell you, in, in, in the account of Noah, the Bible says that everybody was evil, doing what they saw was fit. There was nobody righteous, but one man by the name of Noah, one man. So he could have been affected by everybody around him and said, well, everybody's sinning. Everybody's going crazy. Nobody's going to church. Nobody's standing up for righteousness. Nobody's standing up for good principles and good morals. So let me be as corrupt. He did it. He wasn't a thermometer. He was a thermostat and he changed it. And because Noah did that, he found favor in God's eyes. God saved him. God saved his sons. God saves his family. And God is able to bring restoration and deliverance through one man named Noah. We see people like that in the Bible. Uh, if you've ever heard the story of Queen Esther, it was devastation going on in the land. Uh, Haman had created this plot to destroy all the Jews, and, and everybody was so concerned. Everybody was, was running like Haman is has, has getting ready to you know, bring extinction upon the Jews. Esther could have started to cry, could have started to just be like, oh, my goodness, and fall apart. She didn't. She was a thermostat. She says, I understand what the surroundings is, the situation is, but I'm going to change it. We're going to call a prayer and we're going to call a fast and we're going to do something about it. And that thermostat changed the situation. God used her to change the situation. And through her and through her obedience, she presented herself before the king and she did things unheard of. If you've read the story of Esther, you know that. And God brought deliverance through, through her. And so there are many people in the Bible that we see that that one person made. If you've ever heard the, per, uh, the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the king said, hey, everybody that hears this music it must bow down. If not, they're going to be thrown in the fiery furnace. Everybody was doing it because there's thermostats. Uh, people aren't thermostats everywhere. There's thermometers everywhere, but not thermostats. So everybody was bowing down. But three men said, we're not going to do this. Even though everybody else is, we're not. We're going to stand apart. We're going we're to be a thermostat. We're going to shift this. We're not going to do this. And what happened? Those guys that decided to be different, that decided to, to be and step out and be set apart, they saw a miracle, supernatural miracle of God and a deliverance of God. And I'm here to tell you in life is that we're going to go through situation, circumstance. Um, you know, and I tell people a lot of times when you become a believer and a follower of Christ, um, you're going to go through more difficulties and more issues. A lot of people say, um, you won't. You are because the enemy is going to come against you. The Bible says we wrestle not, meaning there is uh, an engaging situation. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits, principalities, darkness and high places. In other words, there, there's a battle that's going to be going on. And so the, the enemy is going to come after you because he wants to discourage you. He wants you to be a thermometer. He wants to just get you to a place where God's like, you know what? You're not going to go to the next level because you're stuck. That's what the enemy does. He's attacking Christians everywhere. He's trying to silence the church. He's trying to push the church out. And this is where we understand, hey, we can shift and change this atmosphere. This is what the Bible says. And I'm going to read out of the message. I love what it says in Psalms chapter one. It says, you're blessed. When you stay on course, stay on course, walking steadily on the road revealed by God. Don't walk where you think you got to walk. Don't walk where other people are walking. Walk in the path that God has called you to, that, that revealed to you by God. You're blessed when you follow God's directions, doing your best to find him. That's right. You don't go off, your, go off on your own, and a lot of people do that. But you walk straight along the road that God set. And so how do you stay on course? Hey, God has ordained a plan for you. God has ordained steps for you. And no matter what situation you're in, 
you may be in a bad situation and, and right now being like, Pastor, you don't understand. I'm, I'm in this family. I'm in this job. I'm in this. It's just so hard. God's word promises and God says, I will never give you too much that you can't handle. But I want you to think of it this way. Could it be that God has placed you because God is just not an unresourceful God. He is very resourceful. So if he's pa- placed you in a position, he's placed you in a circumstance. What is it for to shift the atmosphere? You may be in that situation thinking, oh, why am I here? And you're questioning God. It's God's like, you don't get it. You're there because I need you to change the thermostat. I need you to change the, ther- uh, the, the temperature uh, that's going on there. And I need you to show people how good I am. I need you with, through your worship, through your attitude, through your speech, what's in your heart. I need you to show people how good, how faithful I am, even in the storm. And that's what people don't understand. When you read the scripture, there's a situation where there's a storm going on. Jesus is asleep on the boat. Classic situation because people say the disciples are going crazy. Jesus, Jesus, don't you care that we're going to die? How can you be asleep? Jesus wakes up and he calms the storm. He says, peace (laughs) and the storms. And then the disciples are amazed. Who is this guy that the winds and the storms obey him? And Jesus turns to them and says, how long must I be with you? In other words, Jesus was saying, don't you get it? You can do this. In other words, Jesus has given you an anointing to be a thermostat to change the atmosphere, to change the circumstance, to change things. He's given you that ability. How many know that in things may be going on in your home, but God has given you the ability, parents, fathers, to change the, the, the thermostat and the temperature in your home by bringing worship, by just praying over your kids, even when they're asleep, just laying their hands. My mom would always pray when we were asleep. There was a time in my life where I was rebellious and my mom would change the thermostat and she would start to pray and lay hands when I'm asleep and start to bring the presence of God. We can do that by worship. We can do that by our attitudes of our hearts. We can do that saying, Lord, even though I'm in the storm, you give me the ability to quiet this storm in the name of Jesus. Whatever's going on in my soul, Lord, I'm, I'm just praying right now with this conflict i'm praying with the situation at work i'm praying with the situation at home i'm praying with the situation in in the family why because god has called you to be a thermostat not a thermometer and and i'm just going to pray with you in this closing time that i have with you uh, our prayer lines are open the numbers there on your screen call um it's not too late but father in the name of jesus for every person that's watching that may be lord hearing your spirit that your spirit leads and guides us. And we may have been a thermometer, Lord, just affected by it and questioning God. But God, you've called us to be a thermostat, to change. You've given us the authority to change atmospheres. How do you change an atmosphere, Lord? Just worshiping you. It's praising you. It's reading your word. It's bringing declaration, Lord, no matter what we're going through. I pray for every listener, every viewer that's watching God that may be in that storm right now and crying out to Jesus. And you may be crying out to Jesus, say, Jesus, where are you? Jesus says, no, I placed you on that boat because I've given you that authority to calm the storm. I pray for faith to arise. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would be with every person in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, it's hot out there. Don't be a thermometer. Be a thermostat in Jesus' name. God bless you.